Welcome to the Spinaca Summit and welcome to our talk, Integrating Fortify Scans in Spinaca. I'm Asya Inusa, a DevOps engineer at InterSwitch Group, I'm part of the team that manages Spinaca and um, works on pipeline design and standardization across the organization. And I'm Abdul Basu Kabir. Um, I work with Asya. So I and Asya basically work on the platform engineering team. Um, which among many other things, we basically standardize and um, serialize how continuous delivery is done in, at InterSwitch. Because InterSwitch is a large organization, there are several teams and each team have a set of applications that they manage. Those applications um, would definitely need to be deployed to um, whatever environments we mostly use Kubernetes whatever environment that they deploy to. And there are different tools that can be used. So when we started, we had a process where Jenkins was used to build and um, run some jobs and some CI jobs. Um, and Fortify was used for security purposes. Basically, Fortify is a static code analysis tool. And because it works in the form of client server, client server approach where there's a client that is used to run the test on the um, code base and there's a server where the results of that scan is sent to for further analysis and basically review. Um, this then had to separate like the scanning and the getting of the results and we couldn't really add that to Spinnaker. And Spinnaker basically is what we use for continuous delivery. Um, so I think, Asya, you want to explain the whole issue a bit more? Yes, so the issue we had was, we had Jenkins running a Fortify scan and pushing the results of Fortify scan to Fortify. And then afterwards, it pushes a success status to Spinnaker regardless of what the security scan, regardless of the results of the Fortify scan. So even if an application's, an application's um, security rating didn't reach what baseline was set by the organization, Jenkins would send a success status to Spinnaker, and that would allow the pipeline to proceed. So what we had was a pipeline where a fortified Jenkins job is triggered by Spinnaker, and once that job is done, an engineer would need to go to the Fortify server and check for the results. And if the um, if the security rating reaches the baseline or passes the baseline, the engineer would mark the security check and say this application is secure. So let the pipeline proceed. But if it was below what the baseline is, then the engineer would mark it as a failed stage. So that process was time wasting, and we could also not guarantee the results that were brought by the engineer, maybe due to someone might be able to um, might make some error or make some mistake when they are evaluating the pipeline and evaluating the security check. And so that was really a challenge for us because part of our mandate on the platform engineering team was that we wanted to really serialize the whole end-to-end -end continuous delivery process, starting all the way from code commits to production deployments. Um, again, before adopting Spinaka, our we had the different stages done manually and in different places. Basically, all of them were um, isolated. Um, in order to integrate something like this, what we decided to do was to get to create a custom stage. And thankfully, Spinnaker has custom stages. So there are two custom stages, the custom webhook and the custom job. Um, the custom job is basically Spinnaker creating a job or a task based on whatever um, account you're using. But for the custom webhook, this is basically creating native-like um, stages that make API calls to an external system and thereby giving you the ability to extend your Spinnaker application. Um, so you would see the stage on the Spinnaker UI 
as if it was in um as if it was a native stage where while it was actually a custom stage and i think we will show that in the next few slides and these stages are basically done by um configuring orca and extending it so with the custom webhook stage we are we're able to now create a flow that doesn't it doesn't have any manual stage and doesn't do any interrupts Yes, so the flow went or the flow goes this way. So you have um, Spinnaker triggering a Jenkins draw. And once the Jenkins draw is triggered, Jenkins runs the Fortify scan using the Fortify client. And after that, Jenkins would push the results of the scan to Fortify. So after Jenkins sends a success status to Spinnaker, the custom webhook stage comes in and makes an API call to a particular endpoint on Spotify and then gets the results of the scan. So after the update, this was how, or this is how the pipeline um, looks. The, you have your Spotify Jenkins job, which is the initial job that, that is run from on Jenkins. Then you have the get Spotify scan results where Spinnaker goes and makes the API call to Spotify and gets the results that we need. And to validate the results that we get, you have the check Spotify scan status stage. And once all that is done, you are able to deploy your application without any manual intervention. Yeah, and um the fact that we could add um a stage that spinnaker that makes spinnaker go out to the fortify server and basically fetch the outputs of the results that was really powerful for us um and in, so in creating the stage what we did was to man, to reconfigure um orca so on the orca yaml orca local .yaml file you um there's a it's there's a provision to add webhooks um so it's called pre preconfigured webhook i think um so what you do there is you add a snippet a ml snippet something similar to this where the label is the name of the stage as you would see it on as you would see it on spinnaker um we added a url which was basically the api call that is made by um, the API call that's made by Spinnaker to go and um, get fetch the results. Um, we also added some custom stages, some custom headers. Sorry, um, the custom headers was is where you basically add any header that is specific to the um, external system. Like for us, what we had there was authentication. Um, you could add other things like payload and um, and some status, some basically set the status that you want. And but for us, all those things were not um, were not relevant in particular to this particular custom stage. What we needed was to add parameters. So parameters are um, just like the parameters on your pipelines, right? You're able to give the end user the ability to actually input some values into a field. And if you notice that, if you notice the for the parameters here, we had one parameter. And if you check the name, that's exactly what you would see um, on line one, where there's the URL and the parameter is actually um, added into the URL to show, to basically fetch a particular endpoint and get the result of a particular application. So with all these, the custom stage was um, gets created. Um, you deploy your Orca, you you save that file, you deploy your Orca, and the custom stage gets created. And you will see that um, on our list of stages there is Fortify scan. Um, I'm sure for those very familiar with Spinnaker, you will check and Fortify scan isn't a native stage, but here it looks as if it was something that was natively created. So no code was no new code was written, no plugin. We didn't need to write any Spinnaker plugin plugin but we now have the Fortify scan stage, which does precisely what we wanted. Go out to um, Fortify, fetch the results of that particular scan, and basically um, give us what we 
um, give us the results or in, in, add the results into the pipeline. Here's where you would, here's where you see the parameter. Basically that field, the Fortify application ID um, as configured on the ORCA file. Here the pipeline admin would actually put the application ID so that it gets added to the endpoints. Um, ideally, this pipeline ID, this um, application ID gets used when fetching the endpoint, but you could as well use that um, ID to, you could as well take that, take the value of that field, that parameter, and add it to a payload if the endpoint call was, the API call was a post request or it needed a payload. Okay, so to validate the results that we got from Fortify Um, ideally you'd be able to add success statuses on your, in your upper local file, which would indicate that once the API call is done, if the status in a part particular JSON path is maybe um, um, success or error, then it should either proceed or it should fail or it should pass that stage in the pipeline. But what we get from Fortify is we get integers, which are, which kind of, um, which identify the number of high priority or critical priority issues in an application. So we're not able to use the inbuilt function of, of this inbuilt function of Worker. So what we did was to add a spell expression, which gets the results of the previous stage and then passes it for a particular value. So for us, the values that we wanted, um, which was specified by the InfoSec team, was the number of high issues in the application. If that's greater than zero, then the pipeline should fail, or the number of critical issues. And if any of these is greater than zero, then it fails the pipeline. So that is an additional stage that helps us to remove any manual check. And once you check the pipeline, you would be able to see the Fortify Jenkins job get Fortify scan results and the validation stage, which I just explained. And after that, you'll be able to deploy your application. Yeah, and you, you see, um, adding that, adding a stage, adding the custom stage basically helped us achieve the goal. Um, have the end-to-end -end, um, delivery process on a Spinnaker pipeline, removing any waste, any manual stage, any wait stage, um, automating and basically serializing any step in the whole continuous delivery process that, that was used and needed um, for the whole application to get deployed um, all the way to the environments. The Spinnaker pipeline does the whole orchestration of the whole continuous delivery, calling Jenkins and also reaching out to Fortify to get the output and making the decision on whether or not um, this is a valid um, pipeline run or not. And that's how we basically solve the issue. Um, Oka, Oka, Oka file, inside the Oka file, you can basically create your custom webbooks and with custom webbooks you can open up a lot of other possibilities whether it's triggering a, a pull request or creating um, maybe creating a third party integration with um, another application as long as it has API all those are possible with Oka. Um, hope you found this session useful um, I see I don't know any other thing to add Yes, so one last thing to add is that um, this is also possible or there is also a way to integrate Fortify with Jenkins, which um, is by using the Fortify plugin. So by using that, you can also get um, Jenkins to notify Spinaka of the security rating. Either the security rating is not um, up to the baseline, but due to our own environment, we decided to go with this approach. Yeah, and that's true. Um, there are multiple ways of doing the integration.
situation, you could do it at the Jenkins point or you could do it at the Spinnaker point. But for us, um, we had to do it at the Spinnaker point and um, basically trying to take advantage of the extensibility feature of Spinnaker. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's on point. Um, hope you enjoyed the session and um, we'll be here for Q and A's. Um, and let's see what you come up with with custom workbooks. Um, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the session. Thank you.